Africa is a continent rich with opportunity. And when business and communities come together, its astonishing potential begins to be felt. With the Sustainable Development Goals steering these partnerships, Africa's future is being rewritten with innovation, foresight and inclusivity. Crossing the length and breadth of the continent, our journalists uncover these stories and share them with the world. Join us now for remarkable stories of partnerships across Africa, building the future and changing lives. It's Africa's time. In a few short years, mobile networks have radically transformed telecommunications and lives across Africa. Mobile and data penetration amongst diverse populations is growing rapidly. It's a mobile ecosystem filled with growth and potential. In Nigeria, for example, with its population of 180 million, nine out of 10 people own a cell phone. The numbers are staggering. And by 2020, the world will have 4.6 billion unique subscribers. Africa will be part of that. But how often do we stop to consider the infrastructure that brings this technology to life and what Africa would be like without it? I'm on my way to Ibadan to meet some really exciting entrepreneurs who've been able to transform their lives and expand their businesses through access to mobile telecommunications. Driving 130 kilometers northeast from Lagos, urban sprawl gives way to rural forests for the briefest time. And before long, we're in Nigeria's third largest city, about to meet a dressmaker who I've been told cuts the best cloth in Ibadan. I'm a native of Ibadan, from your state. I'm blessed with two children. I have a husband and I'm a dressmaker. Oh. Have you written it? Yes. Okay, so you saw the design I like. Okay. This one. Is it easy? Okay. You like it? I like this one. It's no problem. Okay. Just so what's next? The fabric. Yeah. When I started, though the beginning is small, but I started with somebody. When I sew clothes for them, I sew it to another person, and they say, ah, who sew this style for you? They mention me, and they bring many people to me. And to the glory of God, I saw for lawyer, teachers, doctors, and uh, many, many people, including the pastor, Mrs. Oso. You want it to be smart? What do you mean? You want this bust to be fitted, yeah, smart, very well. Yeah. A bust, write it down, 44. So you're going to make it quite tight? Yes. Okay. It's tight like this. Mm. This is where that layer will start, 17. High waist? Yes. That's nice. That some students, after they finish, some they will think that, let me go and learn this dressmaking, bead making, and some other things. It's making me to generate money quick, quick. I'm not be liability to my parents. Have you eaten? Have yeah, you taken something this morning? Yeah, early this morning. This morning. Yeah, I think everything's digested now. Yeah, I mean, when you eat, yes. your stomach will still come out. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Must I stick it out now? <laughs> Someone used to come to me and they would ask me, where do you get this tie? I would say, it's from this magazine. I love people to come to me, choose tie by themselves. Because if they choose tie, it makes me to think. A short gun, don't look down. Okay, stand, so that, stand yes. upright. Uh, so that your message will not short. Yes. Is it okay like this? Yeah, to the knee. That's yes. good. 42. Have you written it? Back. Okay. 14 and a half. I started working as a dressmaker for the past 12 years ago. And uh, I like this work because it's uh, self-employed work. And I don't want my children to go and walk around. That is why I choose this work. I'll be able to take care of my family, my children. Yes, yes, you are right. It will not make me a liability to my husband. So when he was not around, I can take care of my children with this work. How long will it take to make the dress? It will take me to tomorrow. OK. It's Good. because of you. <laughs> Assume it's not you. I used to give people two weeks. I appreciate it. Yes. So tomorrow evening. OK. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. OK. Bye. Bye. 
If I didn't have phone, ah, my work will not be as it is now. I will use camera, snap this guy, I will send it to the person. And when they see it, if they like it, they can communicate to me to get a gay. Or if they don't like the message, send another one to me. Do you like it? Thank you. Fantastic. God bless you. Bye-bye. The average Nigerian is an entrepreneur in her own spirit. So those SMEs, to drive their own business, they are not a big, gigantic company. They are small companies normally. So they do rely a lot on tablets and smartphones and internet and on the telecommunication network in general. And that's where we come in as the people in the back, just to make sure that the networks and availability is maintained for the operators. Mohammed's from IHS Towers, Africa's leading independent mobile infrastructure and tower sharing provider. They operate in Nigeria, Cameroon, Ivory Coast, Rwanda, and Zambia, and their cell towers are keeping entrepreneurs like Wumi in business. So this is one of our sites in Lagos, one of the 23,000 sites yes. that we own across five countries. And uh, this is a typical site in terms of the fence that you see, in I terms see. of the tower inside, in terms of the generators, the, the shelters. And when you see the antenna, these long stuff on the yeah. towers, those actually are the equipment that belongs to the operator. They run all these cables all the way to their cabinet, which you see it over there. And what we do, we just give them that space, we give them the space on the tower, and then I just yeah. give them power supply. IHS also specializes in tower sharing. They build and maintain the tower network, and operators lease space from them, saving costs and the headache of maintaining their own infrastructure. But it's power provision that is key for IHS. How do you provide power to your towers in a country beset with energy problems? And how can you do so in a sustainable way? At the core of IHS is the power solution. In Africa, there is no grid effectively, so which means you have to install somehow like a mini power plant on, on each of these towers. And what makes this challenging is the traditional way has been diesel generators. We're talking around 20 million liters of diesel that have to go to 15,000 different locations in the country in a month, every month. It's not an easy task. We hate diesel, we don't like diesel. Diesel is, is a pollutant, diesel is a nuisance. And our efforts is to basically get to a stage where we have zero diesel consumption. So that's where you start thinking outside the box. What can I do? to reduce my diesel consumption, which reduces my logistical headaches, it saves me cost, and also it's more environmental friendly. IHS has come up with hybrid technology as a solution. I went to see how these reduce diesel consumption, yet still provide power to the towers. You have your generator over there. Yeah. You have your battery back up there. This is basically how it looks like. Yeah. You have all your battery racks stacked here. So the generator will charge the batteries. When the batteries are charged, the generator will switch off, and then we will use the batteries to, to, to charge the site. And then when the batteries are almost empty, they will start generating the batteries again, all in an automated process. And that helps us, as I said, to reduce the diesel consumption from the generator site. It's a camouflage monopole site. Camouflage because this just blends with it. It's like another tree. Yeah. If I want to make a call to you right now and I pick up my phone and I dial your number, it doesn't just go from me to you. How the network works, basically you have all these towers across the country and the signal has to propagate from one tower to another to get to the switch and then to another tower and then to get to you. Most of my customers, they are not, they are not living around my shop. They do come from far, far distance. They may not meet me. They will just drop the material and they will communicate to me. They will call me on the phone. They may have their own style inside their own phone and they will send it to me, talk together, and I will chat with them. This is how I want the neck to be. This is how I want the dress to be. Anytime I have the measurement, you don't have problem again. They will just send the material to me and communicate to me on the phone. It's a necessity nowadays for every company who work or who are interested in the power industry to look for renewable energy, okay? We cannot continue the way things were happening. If nobody started investing in renewable energy, okay, we're going to a disaster. 
not only in terms of carbon emission and being more environmental friendly, in terms of cost as well. What's unique about this particular site is the existence of the solar panel. It takes the rays from the sun and it basically converts it into power. In normal cases, you would have just this. So imagine this yes. generator running 24-7 yes. a day, consuming diesel from that particular tank. But now with this solar panel, what it does, basically it allows the generator to run less number of hours to power up the, those batteries inside that will generate the power to support all these cabinets that you see behind you, which are the equipment for the operators. Johanna Jovi is an independent thought leader in the telecoms industry. I wanted to get his perspective on how the sector is developing. Star companies have been actually extremely innovative and extremely good at focusing on, on these incremental improvements uh, of the uh, power of the mobile sites in order to make these sites more green, but also to make this site more efficiently run, efficiently managed. You have to understand the site's peculiarity, the location, how many operators you have occupying that site, and all of these, they drive the selection of the power system to install on the site. We did not really reinvent the wheel in this. What we have done is simply we, we saw the technologies, we tried to design it in a way that we can meet that thin line where the investment and the cost of they meet on this line. So we cannot overinvest, doesn't make sense, and we cannot underinvest because it's not profitable for our investors. So we have to find a way to make it profitable for the investor and for the business, at the same time profitable for the environment. So it's a win-win for everybody. It's not that often that one gets to look behind the scenes at companies that are prioritizing green energy to supply the country with a reliable telecoms network. But I also wanted to see what Wumi had created for me in record time. Ah, good morning. Hi, good morning. You are welcome. Yeah. I'm here to get the dress. Yes, your work is finished. I'm excited. Okay. Oh, wow. I love it. Let me see how long it is. Not too long. Okay, that's perfect, right by the knees. I really love it. Thank you, my dear. It's beautiful. The Nigerian economy has diversified substantially. The fact that 90% of, of, the, of the business is now SMEs has been enabled, in my opinion, largely by the, by the revolutionary growth of the mobile industry. Everyone has a phone now, and it has enabled and allowed this massive number of businesses to flourish all over the continent. So how long did it take you to? Um, to do it's too much. I need to suspend some work because of you. Oh, I don't want to disappoint you. I hate disappointing people. <laughs> Since you. I promise you, I must fulfill my promise. Thank you so much. Ah, you too. Nice to meet Thank you. Thank you. Nice to I'll meet be you. I'll you next time. Yes, I'm coming back. Okay, bye bye. Thank you. Yes. Nigeria is Africa's largest economy, and cell phone infrastructure is vital to its everyday activities and sustainable growth. It allows people to connect, communicate, and increase their incomes. Without responsible, forward-thinking cellcoms infrastructure, Africa won't develop and enjoy its huge opportunities. Mobile telecoms have this extraordinary power to transform people's lives. Everyone has a, a mobile in their pocket. So this has had impact on the consumer end of the market. Telecoms have also had a very big impact on the uh, small enterprises. They've allowed uh, entrepreneurs to actually develop their own business. With the help of mobile technology, all sorts of small businesses are growing, from household goods traders to fruit sellers. Before mobile technology, there was no such thing as a cell phone card seller. Now tens of thousands of salespeople are popping up everywhere. My name is Adiolo Adegile. 
When the invention of this uh, phone stuff and everything came in, then the business also entered like, you have to make calls, sell the charge card. In the morning, I wake up, send my prayer, then leave my house around 7.30, get to work, go and buy the card to sell. Although initially when I started, my sister was not in support of it. But I told her that I have no choice. It's better to lay my hands on something than just to sit down, roaming about the streets, doing nothing. When it comes to rushing time, because they are of different network, so not every customer will be able to wait for you to answer them. So you need to sort the card out. So as you just come, go straight to where you sort it, and pick it, hand it over to them, give them their change. And the funny part is, some people do buy on credit. So you know, we are Africans, we are Nigerians, people buy on credit. So they say, okay, we'll return the money, we'll pay later. You just give it to them, hoping that they will pay later. Through the business, I've been able to sustain myself and with the assistance of some relatives, like my friends and my sister. I live at uh, Amuda, along, it's not far from my workplace. I like the community. The people living there, they are very accommodating. The mobile phone industry in Nigeria is very good. Before the invention, there was nothing like inform uh, passing information. You want to get to, across to someone, you have to travel for days, for months, for minutes, for hours. But with the help of communication industry, I think all those have been reduced. With my mobile phone, within a twinkle of eyes, I can call anybody abroad, anywhere, part of the world. Cell phone towers have actually changed the face of Africa. People are now able to have access to information. They are now able to have access to facilities and services that otherwise never would have had without the cell phone towers that we see proliferating in Africa. The behavior of the customer is changing. Nobody wants to talk anymore. I mean, you have people on dates not even talking. They're just chatting, they're doing things on the phone. Everyone wants a good broadband connection. Everyone wants to be able to use it for social networking, use it for running their business, use it for checking email, use it to romance, whatever. Presently, the base stations are connected through microwave, and microwave is not sustainable. It's subject to, to downtimes whenever there is rain, for example. It even has limitations on capacity, and that's where the fiber comes as a solution. You can lay down the fiber optic cables underground, so eliminating any risk from rain or weather issues, and at the same time, they can virtually give you unlimited bandwidth. And that's where fiber is important, to connecting the size and generating that extra capacity to the operators. IHS has a vision of creating a connected Africa, which not only requires thousands of towers, but also a state-of-the-art operation center or hub. From here, they offer clients infrastructure management and site monitoring, and can track the diesel supplied and consumed, operator by operator, kilowatt by kilowatt. This daily data enables them to improve both the efficiency and the sustainability of their sites. Trigger alerts to problems such as temperature increases or a faulty generator prompt staff to dispatch teams to remedy the problem. Two years ago we had a few thousand towers, uh, 5,000 towers maybe under our management. Now we have 23,000 towers, so we've grown more than four times over a period of a few years. And that's really unheard of, and that probably can, can only happen in Africa. I'm Taiwo Adieyo. I'm HND holder, accounting. But now I find myself in photography and shooting of video. I 
don't like to be working under somebody. I like to be myself. I really enjoy this work and I like it because when I held my camera like this, it's like I'm just playing. You know, it's my work. But anytime I hold camera like this, starting snapping, I get different concerns in my head. Please do like this, do like this. Let me see your hands. When you see your customer, you just share it up. You forget about what is bothering you. You let your customer smile. So the next time they will come back to you. Uh, people know me, they will come, take passports, take photographs. Go and book for event photograph tools. They want to do any celebrating in Nigeria, they will call photographer. They will call photograph and the video to come and put them into memory. Mobile phone is very, very interesting. Really enjoyed it with our business here because my customer may be at Abuja, that is the capital of Nigeria, and I'm here in your state, but I'm here. You just call me, please. I need a sample. I'll just pump. Take my phone. Hello, just give me two minutes. I'm coming. I will download it and I will send it. They will get what they need, the price, the everything, and the sample of the picture that I took. You don't need the office. And it's very easy. Since now we are in technology live, most of the software we are using, like 3G, we download it. We used to do edit pictures, we edit a video. All these things are they are, just, they are helping us. Let us comfortable in our work and make, let, us, let us perfect our work into standard. The phone industry has changed how these people operate. And we at IHS, we sit at the heart of that industry. Everyone wants a smartphone, not because it's a trend, it's because it's a different social behavior. It, it evolves your business, your social uh, networking ability, ability to handle money, it, it evolves every aspect of your life. The continent is not going backwards on this, it's just going forward. When we're talking about uh, 3G, access to the internet on the African continent, this has endless possibilities because it's no longer connecting one individual with, with another individual. It's really about uh, connecting one individual with the rest of the planet. This means applications. Uh, this means new services. If you are not on mobile phone or you are not, cannot download or something, you, you are not a standard. You are not, you are not, you will not be okay because you need to satisfy your customer every time they need you. So it's this, this possibility to uh, create this intermediation between demand and a supply, which is the full power of the internet. With this income, I pay my rent, pay my neighbor fee. I'm able to sponsor myself to school, at least to the university stage, VNC order, feed myself. Try to get some things for my fans and try to help those around me that I need. Development is about providing people with enough options to choose the path they want to lead in life. Where there is no information, development is usually curtailed and we need information to break out of the various challenges that impede development in the continent. And mobile technology has brought about that change. I think people look at Africa as a market, look at Africa as, as, as potential for growth. In my opinion, the individual is what matters the most. As long as we keep that in focus, we keep improving the, the working conditions of that individual, we keep improving the, the ability to access technology like broadband, internet, the continent is just going forward. I'm really happy that I'm a photographer and a video man. To get money, to feed my family, Phone is really improve our business here in Nigeria. If you don't have it, your business cannot move. If you don't have it, you can't move. You can't move. In the future, and this is my dream, is to see data available for every single person in Africa. Because without information, without access to data, I don't see prosperity in any community. I think the fast growing telecommunications industry in Nigeria has in part been due to the people's tenacious and entrepreneurial spirit. Along the journey, the people I've met have really been able to optimize the opportunities presented to them and bring the ideas into fruition through the access to mobile technology. And I think if this merging of technology and great ideas continues, 
then there is great potential for Africa to participate in global innovation and coming up with its own solutions to their problems.